These video documentary style videos are blowing up on YouTube. They get millions of views and insane engagement. Most people assume you need years of animation skills to pull this off, but not anymore. With AI, you can build professional looking 3D scenes in minutes, even if you've never touched animation software before. I've been testing this workflow for weeks, and in this tutorial, I'll show you step by step how to create 3D documentary videos that look like they took months to make, but actually take less than 10 minutes. We'll use only two tools to generate scenes, animate them, and stitch together a full sequence that rivals the biggest channels. Let's dive in. So, first, you will like these tutorials to keep coming make sure to subscribe to my channel and now let me show you the first tool so the first tool obviously will be chat gpt this is my favorite tool for literally anything so here we'll be using prompts this is pretty much self-explanatory and here is the framework that you can use and create literally any prompt you would like so we will start with a detective story or more like a prison story and here is the framework Create five highly detailed cinematic 3D render prompts for a detective cold case documentary. Each prompt must follow this format, a highly stylized 3D render of a wide, featureless human figure with no facial features, fully smooth and reflective material, perfectly seamless and ultra polished. No seams, no joints, no cracks, no artifacts. The figure is in a specific detective scene with detailed props and environment, positioned exact pose action, wearing clothes details. The scene is lit with lightning style, casting shadow details. The background is background description, cinematic angle, camera perspective, ultra realistic 3D rendering. And then you Say something like make each of these five prompts unique but thematically connected to detective work court cases and investigation so you can use it and you can also change it if you need to so i'll show you later how to change it if you want to adjust it to any situation but here we have a few prompts so here we have one second one the third one the fourth one and the last one so we can work with these this is our beginning and now let me show you the tools we'll be using for image generation and also video generation. So we have two options. First option is of course Chat LLM with Abacus AI where you can generate images and we'll be using Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra. And you can also generate videos here and we'll be using for this one Cedance Pro. And the second option is Open Art, so we can use any of these tools. And here you can also pick Flux. In this case, you can just write here Flux. And I usually pick this option, which is Flux Pro 1.1. So I pick this option and this is how you generate your images. For videos, you click video here. And then you can also pick all the latest models. In this case, I usually pick Cedance. So this is what we'll be using. You can also pick Light or Pro version. In most cases, Pro version would be a little bit better. Five seconds completely enough for one uh, video or one scene. And this is everything that you need to actually make it work. So uh, let's head back to our prompts. Here we have all the prompts. So we can, for example, now copy the first one. And then we simply head back to Chat LLM or Open Art. We hit Image. We pick our models. In this case, it's going to be flags. We paste the prompt. And I usually turn off this option because if you want to modify prompts, you usually need to have very short and simple prompts so it will add a lot of details. If your prompt is already detailed, then you don't need to modify it at all and you will get better results. So I don't pick this option. And then you can also increase the image prompt strength. But in most cases, I just leave it as it is, let's say around 0.1. But if you want this to follow your prompt very precisely, go to, let's say, between 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. And this is how you can generate your image. But as I mentioned, I will keep it very low. So it's 0 0.1 and we simply hit generate. So this is the, the first part. It's very easy. And the same when it comes to open art. So we hit image here and then we simply have our model, which is Flux Pro. We paste our prompt. Then you have a prompt optimizer. So in many cases, you just don't pick this option at all. And then you don't need to change it that much. You just want to change your aspect ratio. But because I ran out of credits, I cannot change this option anymore. And this is all you have to do. Then you just hit create. And here we have some examples from Open Art. Open Art is good. The, this model, I would say Flux Pro is the best for it. The quality is the best. And I usually use it for all my generations. And here we also have the generation of Chat LLM. And as you can see, they also look very, very nice, even probably better than this prompt on Open Art. So here is one. Here is the second one, the third one. And also the last one. In my opinion, they all look good. They look good enough for our projects. So this is how you start. Here I also have a few more prompts, a little bit more detailed prompts with a few different angles. And the truth is, if you see prompt that you like, so for example, you like this prompt, then you just take it and then uh, you head back to chat GPT and then you simply write your prompt. So for example, you can say something like below is my prompt. 
can you write a new prompt based on that right now the character should be running away from the pre guards and then you paste the prompt you can also add make sure to keep the same style and details so this is all you have to do and then you will get your prompt so based on this prompt he will have a rewritten version so he will have a new prompt we just take it now we head back to um, chat LLM or again it might be open art here we paste the prompt we pick how many images we want let's say we want four so this is what we do and we simply hit generate so let's wait for this generation we'll see what it looks like and then we'll generate a few more images okay so here we have our generations I would say the first one is good he's running away the second one is all right too the last one is good let's say only the third one looks a little bit weird so if I would keep any of these, I will, it will be probably the first one, the third one, and the last one. So this is how you can change this to literally any use case you want. Now, let me show you a few more examples. So we want to have a nice story. So we start with this prompt here. We have this white faceless humanoid figure. And sometimes when you have some details that you don't really like, you can just change a small thing. So for example, here, everything looks all right. So we will not use it here, but I will show you later how to change it. So again, here is a whole prompt and here we have generation. So here is the first one, which is not bad, I would say. I don't like this background here, but this is fine. The second one is very good. There are, let's say some distortion with fingers, but this is good enough, I would say. Then we have the third one. So fingers are better. And then we also have the last one, which is also good. So in my opinion, the best one is the third one and also the last one. The light is probably the best in the second one, but fingers are a little bit messed up. So here we have the next prompt. Now we have this humanoid figure that is just trying to dig a tunnel. He is wearing this orange jumpsuit and he is in a prison cell, right? So again, very nice generations. The first one looks very good. The second one also looks very nice. Then we have the third one, which is good and the last one. In my opinion, the last one is the best because I like the light here. It would look nice when you actually turn it into a video. So I will keep this one. Now here we have the next one. Here is again in a orange jumpsuit and here is kneeling beside his prison bed. And he is basically looking for a hidden knife. So here we have the third generation. It looks nice. The second one, the third one, and the last one. I like the last one. This is probably my favorite. And the second one is also good. So this is what we will keep for our video generation and here we have the next prompt so now the same thing we have this guy but now we have striped a uniform and this is uh, this person standing in the yard so with a message the first one is great the second one is also not bad the first one is also good but the first one in my opinion is better and the last one is also good so out of these i would say the first one is the best and let's go to the next example, which is exactly this one here. Now we have the same prompt, but I just changed the suit. Now we have orange jumpsuit. So here we have the first version, the second one, here we have the third one, and also the last one. So if you would like to change the colors, here you can do it quite easily as well. So you got the point, you see that it's not very difficult. So here we have also the next prompt and the next set of images. They look all right. Now it's also very important to get different angles of the same scene. So if there is a scene that you like and you would like to make it longer, then you can just add different angles. And so here we have a prompt, create three camera angles variation of this hidden contraband knife search scene, all using the same wide featureless human figure format, smooth, reflective, seamless, ultra polished, no lines, no seams, no joints, no cracks, no artifacts. So this is your framework. This is what you want to do. When you have this framework, you just paste it here and then you write on top based on the prompt below. Give me free ready to use prompts. And then you will get free angles based on your original prompt, right? So here we have front facing close up, low angle tracking shot, and then we have over the shoulder chase shot. So this is what I was trying first. As you can see, here we have again the same figure. We have extreme close up angle, but it didn't work that well. Now the second one, I did something different. So here we have cinematic wide angle shot. This one is not bad, but my favorite is actually this one. So we have cinematic over the shoulder angle. So it looks all right. It doesn't really look like we are behind the person, but it's still good enough. So this is my favorite and I will use it later. Nevertheless, here is the first generation, the second one. Here we have the third one and here is also the last one. So I will keep the first one. 
So now it's time to turn all of these into videos, which is quite simple. All you have to do is click on this button, video generation, you pick your model. In this case, I usually pick CDNS Pro. I upload the image and then you write the prompt. And when it comes to prompting, when you have already image, it's very simple, but I will show you all the prompts in a second. If you want to do it the same with open art, again, you just hit here on video, then you switch model to, again, CDNS, and you pick ideally Model Pro, but if you don't have many credits, you just use Lite and 1080p. But in this case, just pick Pro and 1080p. So this is how you can do it. And of course, it's from image to video, but I'm using ChatLLM here. As you can see, the prompt is very simple. We just try to maintain all the details, lightning, and it's slow zoom in. And here we also have the video. So this is a very simple video, a very simple animation. There is no problems here. There is a problem with fingers, but fingers are actually problem of the image, not necessarily video generation. So make sure that you upload a proper generated image before proceeding with generating your video. Here we have the second one. So again, we have slow zoom in, keep the lightning and the details. And here is also the video. So this is a good generation. We have this guy sitting here. He is looking at the evidence. Probably he is just a suspect. Aspect, he is not convicted yet. So this is a nice generation. Now the next one we have this character that is digging in the ground and the generation is nice. It's not perfect I would say because we can see that he is changing this fork or spoon whatever it is to a big a shovel but it's not bad I would say. I would say it's still a nice generation so keep it. Now the next one we have a character that is writing in a notebook and again the generation is very uh, good. He is writing, it looks very nice. And with these generations you can always decide if you want to have a lot of motions or you want to have just simple uh, animation like for example these characters are not really moving. In this case I want to keep more motion uh, in these videos but if you want to keep them steady without much movement you can also generate um, characters like that. You just need to say uh, make sure that character isn't moving, it's just mannequin, something like that, and it will generate very steady, um, let's say just zoom in or something like that. And here we have the next one, we have a character that is reading a file and we have slow zoom in as well. And again, very nice generation, we can see that he is reading. There are a little bit problems with the hand at the beginning, but again, it comes from the image prompt, not from the video itself but I will keep this generation, it's nice in my opinion. Now the next one, he's sitting in a cell. Again, I just said slow zoom in, and as you can see, CDNs already know what to do. So the generation is nice, you know, we can see the nice movement, he's sitting on the ground, and just probably is being quite unhappy with the situation he is in right now. Here we have the next one, so slow zoom in, keep the movement steady, and he looks like he's making the bed. Maybe he was looking for something, but actually he found it already. Now, here we have the next one where he actually found this knife, and we can see this knife or this blade, and here we have the faceless, the character is hiding a knife, slow zoom in, steady movement. And sometimes when you see mistakes, make sure to address it in your prompt. So for example, I generated one prompt and I just said, slow zoom in, the character is hiding the knife. And it actually added eyes on the whole face to the character, which is not bad. I would say it would be a nice style if we would like to generate videos like that, but this is not what we are looking for here. So that's why I changed this prompt and I added a face this character is hiding a knife. And here is also the generation. So it's all right. We can see that it was trying to add facial features here as well. But nevertheless, generation is quite nice and I will keep it for just later, you know, for the whole editing. So this is in a nutshell how to generate all these videos. It's quite easy, I would say. This is not magic and then you just need to put them all together. So for example, I use CapCut for it and all I have to do is to put them on a timeline and let it run. So for example, first, okay, we have this person and it's just interrogation. So he's not a felon yet or, you know, is before his conviction and he is just watching the evidence because let's say a detective made him watch this evidence, right? Now the second part, we can see that he is already convicted or he is handcuffed. So we don't really know what is happening yet, but we can say that probably he is being convicted right now and soon he will be transferred to prison. Now the third scene, we actually see him in prison already, so we just continue the story, and right now he is probably quite unhappy, but he wants to change the situation. So then the next one, he's reading files and he's finding ways how to escape from this prison, what are its weak points, and basically he is you know, accessing files he is not supposed to, to find a way to escape the prison. Then he is making some notes, maybe drawing a map of this prison, something like that. So here is the next scene. Now, 
the next one he found a knife and now he's preparing to hide this knife in his cell we can see he's successful he hid the knife into the cell so this is nice and now the last scene we can see that he is ready and he's trying to escape right now so this is how you could build your story this is how you create all these videos and combine them into one story this is very important because everyone can create a video but combining them into one coherent story is a little bit more difficult than just putting them all on the timeline. So this is what I want to show you in this video. It's very simple, very straightforward. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. And of course, if you would like to generate images, videos, discover the latest AI tools and monetize AI fast, make sure to watch the video that you see on the screen right now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.